Hello beautifuls. I'm just going to briefly pull myself out of a little creative hole that I'm currently living in and tune in for a video with all of you on the topic of hirsutism as it's probably I would say the number one topic I'm asked about nowadays and I still have so much to share on this topic. Uh, so many thoughts that feel really prevalent and important for me to share because this is one of those topics that is um, it's important for a lot of women because it's many many women on the planet are facing hirsutism right now by far i would say it's it's the topic that i'm asked about more than anything else so it's very common but it's also very misunderstood and it's very unknown and the only way i can truly even retrieve information about it is when i go deep deep into a, an altered state of consciousness through breath work like i did this morning and received all of this information uh, or through being deep in meditation practice and really navigating like the depths and the realms of this this particular topic and and we're not going to find useful information online because there is no information no one has any idea why this is happening the only way they could ever slightly give you any kind of truthful information is by someone just telling you it's related to hormonal imbalance dis dysfunctions within the body uh, and that's true that is what it is related to although that is just one part of it right so i have done two videos two four two videos on this topic before i've done a video on food salute i've done two videos talking about solutions one has been based around food uh, so you want to go check that one out and then the other one that I have more, more recently done is around energy, which is probably even, I would say, more important than food. But they're important to use in conjunction with one another. Um, and so that one's really talking about the masculine dominance that a lot of females are facing in the planet right now, on the planet. And that is, that is leading to this imbalance ratio of male hormones in the body, which leads to hirsutism. Although when I witness what is going on in my own body and what's going on on my own body and also the women that I'm in contact with, the women in my community, I can really start to unpack and, um, and really dial in a lot of information around this topic. And so I want to bust through some stories uh, because I get a lot of clients reach out to me and say, my doctor told me this, this and this, and they're like in a state of like uh, turmoil and fear. And I'm just like, hmm, that doesn't seem accurate at all. So one story that I really want to bust through is this story that once the hair follicle goes dark and coarse and turns into what we call hirsutism, it is permanently like that. It cannot go backwards from that. Once the hair follicle develops in that way, it's done. So I've heard this from several different women and um, and I think a lot of people, you know, their hirsutism gets worse because they start to feed this story. Although this is so not true. I'm like living proof of this and I really want to get close and intimate with all of you right now because I have had so many like, okay, so this is the honest truth. I have never had complete beard like hirsutism. That isn't what I've experienced, but I have experienced on my chin, cheeks, uh, neck, chest, nipples, stomach, as well as all the other areas that are just naturally quite hairy. Um, on all of those areas, I have experienced, I would say on my face, about 10 long, thick, very dark hairs on my face at a time, maybe 15 or 20 at worst. On my neck and chest, I would say around 20 or 30 at a time. Um, and oftentimes it can just be like quite a few going down that are quite long and dark and then probably 20 or 30 on each of my nipples at a time. So my hirsutism, it wasn't like full on, you know, like what a lot of you were experiencing, but it's the same thing, you know, it's the same condition. If it's showing up in this way and then it's showing up in a more severe way, there's no difference between those two conditions, my dear. There's only this condition that's showing up that we can see that some kind of imbalance of some kind. And so I don't want you to continue feeding any stories that are trying to tell you like that this is it and this is just what you have to deal with now because it's not true. And I want to show you up 
close and personal. So I had this all over my, my face. Like I had quite a few on my cheeks and you can like really see my face right now. Like let's get up there and personal. And on down here, this was all like the bottom of my chin when I was diagnosed with PCOS was all like this as well. And then down here and then also all over my chest. So I really want to get like up close and personal and show you that from that perspective because you can see there's there's nothing there like there's literally nothing and if a dark dark hair never shows up in this whole area anymore and if a little dark hair did show up on my chest or my nipple I would pluck it and then I notice that that hair follicle it doesn't grow back so for us to be trying to believe in the fallacy that once it goes dark, thick and coarse, it's going to be like that forever. And that hair follicle is just going to keep on growing back. And like, if we pluck one hair, six more come to their funeral. Like, I just want to bust through all of this. These are all myths. Although from one perspective, they are also true. Because one who is not committing to a healing path will experience reoccurring symptoms, such as reoccurring hair, like hirsutism. And that's like with anything. If you're not addressing it from the root, you're going to keep on getting acne. You're going to keep on getting more psoriasis show up in different areas of the body. You're going to keep on growing darker hair in more areas of the body if the imbalance isn't addressed. And so uh, I really want to also talk about laser hair removal as a solution because, um, because a lot of you ask me about this and I touched on it in my initial video, but I want to go a little bit deeper. So my thoughts on laser hair removal for hirsutism, I may regret making this video one day once we have more research about laser hair removal. I've been using laser hair removal for probably, <clears throat> probably since I was about like 15 or 16 because I was always crying to my mum that like my legs are so hairy and like my when I grew pubic area, I was just like, oh, it's so hairy. And like, I just had this like, um, what is aversion towards being hairy because my dad's a really hairy person. So I've had quite a few laser hair removal sessions, never on any of the areas I was experiencing hirsutism, but I've had it on my full legs, my Brazilian many a times, <clears throat> my bikini and under my arms. And this has been a really productive thing for me. You know, it's really nice that like, I don't really have to shave those areas anymore. And it really works for, you know, and I say that I may regret making this video one day because we don't have enough evidence to see what it's doing to the body. Um, but I'm kind of like a mind over matter gal. I'm kind of like, it's all good. Like, you know, I think that it's fine. And if my intuition ever tells me not to do it anymore, which I rarely do, probably once every two years, um, if my intuition tells me not to do it, I'll stop and I'll release that information. But right now I'm not getting a no from my intuition. So I get a session every couple of years for maintenance. Does this work for hirsutism? I believe that it can be a treatment that you use in conjunction with hirsutism because there's no way that you want to just remain with all of these kinds of hair on your body and feel super confident and gorgeous and sexy as the woman you are. Of course you can underneath all of that, but I totally understand that you want to rid this condition. I totally, totally get it. And laser hair removal would be something I would recommend but not initially. It's not actually something that's going to work for you. You could probably do it, um, but if you're really in the thick of it, it's like, it's not gonna work. The hair follicle is gonna keep growing back because hirsutism cannot be solved from the outside in. It has to be done from the inside out. That was certainly my own experience and it's definitely been the experience for the women who have been reaching out saying, the hair's finally getting lighter and it's like starting to get better. Uh, it's a long, it's a symptom that can take a little bit of a long time. So my question for you is this, are you willing to do the work for two years, you know, like to do the inner work? And when I say the inner work, I'm not just talking about your diet and I'm not just talking about the energy and the masculine and the feminine and look, facing all of your emotions and no longer suppressing things. Like I did a video on those two different topics. It's like using all of that in conjunction plus some, like plus 
the deepest, deepest yearnings of your soul to understand why this condition has showed up for you and what it's reflecting to you and why it brings up so much turmoil and fear and anxiety. It's like, this is the healing path, girls. You know, this is doing the work because... You know, the healing path, it's not just about the physical body. It's about walking your dharma, which is a Buddhist term for walking your spiritual path. It's about really delving deep, deep into layers of yourself that you didn't have access to prior to receiving this condition. And it's about moving into deep periods of listening to the whispers of your body, your soul, your mind, and your ancestors who face their own imbalances and their own ways of being suppressed and suppressing their feminine energy, not feeling safe to be in their feminine. And now all of that ancestral lineage and energy has passed down the line and it's manifesting in your body in this way. And you are being asked and called upon to face it, to really face it and look at it and, you know, do whatever you need to do to follow a path that is just like, it is unraveling all of this. And it's not just for you. It is for all of the women who didn't feel comfortable or safe or like they were able to be the full expression of their feminine self. And this just breaks down and erodes over time until we land in 2019, where millions upon millions of women are being diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome every year. And so many women on top of that are just displaying like little dark hairs all over their face and their stomach and some with acne and all of these signs that are telling us our testosterone and androgens are through the roof. It's like we have to keep looking deeper and seeing how we can unravel this issue. So without going off on too many tangents, I really want to make it clear that you are not going to have to live with this forever and get really clear on the stories you're feeding yourself. Get really clear where you're retrieving your information from because I get it. Like I was a Google obsessed little investigator when I was diagnosed with PCOS. As I tell the story in my, like when I tell my whole story in my program in module one, I tell everyone that like the first thing that changed my whole life was saying no to the medication and walking home in New York, crying my eyes out, getting on Google and just searching PCOS heal it naturally question mark. And like that whole Google search was the beginning of a new life for me and a new career and a new way to like fully understand what my body needed. So I get it. It's like our first source of information retrieval. Although at some point, I truly believe that we have to stop going on Google in order to fully heal our body because Google is, it's like the world wide web of facts, of fiction, of information from a thousand million different subjective opinions. And the truth is none of those people can ever tell you what's true and real and really discern, you know, like if you're reading something or you're listening to a doctor or you're listening to a YouTuber and it's feeling contracted and heavy in your system and you shut off the video, you're like, God, I feel a bit afraid. That is your emotional guidance system telling you it is untrue and do not believe what you are hearing because it is fear-based energy just feeding your system with more irritation and inflammation, which is just aggravating these symptoms. So you always want to listen to what feels good and what feels expansive in your body and like, oh, like that feels true. You know that feeling when you're like watching something and you're like, God, that feels so true. Like that feels like my truth. Keep on adopting that and leave out the rest because information is just feeding the subconscious mind. And I create these videos for free for all of you because I don't provide a lot of information in these videos because I like to actually witness you and support you throughout the process. So I do save that for my, my enclosed community. Um, but I do that for a reason. It's not because I don't love you and I don't want to help you. I create these videos as a very important way to open a neural pathway in your subconscious mind that helps your subconscious to go, ah, she did it. I can do it too. And that is the most powerful thing you can ever do for anything you want in your life, including healing your body. Because when your subconscious decides 
she did that or they did that, I can do that too. What we can also call an expander or someone who opens the horizons of what's possible. Then as soon as your subconscious mind makes that decision, everything starts to change because it's not our conscious mind that is manifesting and healing. It is the unconscious mind. It's the subconscious subconscious limbic part of the brain that is constantly informing the body of like what's going on. And this is firing off all the neurotransmitters to tell your body what hormones and chemicals to secrete. So you can see that when we're constantly in this fear-based mind, it's like, how do we ever get better? We don't because we keep on creating the same reality. We keep on waking up every single day and walking out the door and just creating the same neural pathways and the same reality. Not because that's just the reality that's been bestowed upon us and we're a victim, but because we're not looking at our subconscious mind enough to decide we want something different and that we're going to create something different. So that was a lot of information. I know that's a lot, so just take all of that in. So I'm just looking at my notes. Is there anything else I wanted to... Yeah, that feels, that feels like it. So laser hair removal is good. I would say that that's something that you could do if it resonates with you. Um, although you, I don't believe that's something that you would do straight away. What you want to be doing is you want to be going on a natural healing protocol. And you want to be, you know, I'm not even taking on clients right now, but like if you wanted to work one on one with like a mentor, then they could support you. But like, OK, so the, the fact of the matter is I'm not trying to market myself here until I found someone who's combining all these things. I can't recommend and I haven't found anyone, but it is a mixture. It's cellular detoxification. It's bringing alkalinity in the body. I watch it when I eat an acidic diet. The hair can go darker right now. I'm day. Um. 16, 17 on a master fast drinking this and, and everything's light. It's like my skin's light. My, you probably can't see my eyes are light. Like everything goes light. The hairs on my body, are super blonde and it's alkalinity. It's just when we're cleaning out the body and we're alkalinizing it, it's like, you know, there's no, there's no such thing as like acne and psoriasis and like all these dense things, you know, like that's imbalance, that's acidosis. So it's cellular detoxification, it's, it's balancing energies in your body and really acknowledging that you have seven chakras and energy centers that all need to be working and in alignment because if there's blockages, it's just going to create stagnation in the body and with the hormones. So it's looking at it from like the energetic standpoint, the food standpoint, being it's looking at it from the mind standpoint and really looking at the subconscious mind as I was just talking about. It's looking at doing all of the womb work because a lot of this is manifesting from the ovaries, which is coming from sexual trauma and all of these things. Like you can see it's complex and it's beautiful. And I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by that. I love this healing path. It's like a puzzle of constantly like going, ah, oh, what's going on here? And oh yeah, I wasn't facing myself here. And now I can call back that part of self and accept that part of myself that I was always rejecting. And it's like, as we do all of this work, there's like fountain of energy and radiance that's like bursting up within us until eventually you look around I've got goosebumps all over this is like my truth meter we look around and we go oh my god this body is fantastic and beautiful and perfection and this life is magnificent and vibrant and radiant and and the mind is the mind like we all have one and it's crazy but it's beautiful and it's your computer system and hardware drive for you to build beautiful memories and to create many more. So we have a beautiful integration of systems here to work with and play with. It's just about bringing them back into alignment. So I'm going to wrap up there. If any of you have questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. I don't always get back to all my comments because I get a lot of them now, but I will do my best. Um, if you want any more information about the program, then just send me an email. Otherwise, I'll keep uploading videos whenever I get the download too. Love you all.